Do you see the trail behind this shark? This month, I filmed many of these trails. Most, if not all the sharks I film, leave them. These trails intrigue me, so I spent some time researching what causes them. Here's what I found out. The trails are the result of vortex rings generated by the thrust or horizontal movement of the tail. The horizontal locomotion pushes water in a rotation around the shark's caudal fin, resulting in the vortex trail. So it's basically a vortex of water movement. And as you see here, in this sped up footage, it's an absolutely beautiful pattern of nature. All three of the sharks in this clip display it. However, I've noticed the trails take a slightly different appearance based on the water depth. Equally interesting is that the vortex trails are not easily visible up close. This month started out with some less than ideal weather for shark spotting, but once the storms passed, I was able to film many sharks in shallow water. It is in this shallow water that they sometimes go through the waves. It's easily seen from the shore if you watch closely, and it is always one of my favorite behaviors to film with the drone. From above, you can often see the shark's shadow on the ocean floor as it glides through the water. It takes a bit of work, but I am slowly cataloging each shark I film. They all have characteristics that I often recognize, and I use them as names. I named this one Mohawk. Can you see why? This is the smallest shark I've filmed thus far. I appropriately named it Smalls. This one is very interesting. Here's why. This clip is from January, and Smalls is right next to a large shark I see often, whom I've yet to name, ironically. The larger shark is in my estimation around 10 to 11 feet. But the interesting thing here is that I've seen these two sharks in three different places, but near each other each time. Here's a clip from last week, for example. Perhaps you can suggest a name for this shark. It's a very active shark. In fact, I've filmed it interacting with birds on many occasions. Is it just playing? Is it hunting? Or is it just curious? What do you think? Either way, anytime it makes an appearance, it always puts on a show. As I photograph these white sharks, I am trying to capture images of their fins from above and from the side for future identification purposes. One thing I've seen is that nearly all white sharks have battle scars. These scars can be seen from above. Some are more pronounced than others. Do you see the white gash at the base of this shark's pectoral fin? Here's another one I captured this month. Do you see the deformity on its right pectoral fin? As I get closer, it becomes more visible. If you look closer, it appears the end of the fin is missing. It is easy to speculate, but almost impossible to say definitively. These animals face challenges from other sharks, large mammals, and humans on a daily basis, all of which take a toll on a shark's body but these animals are very well adapted to this rough life. They have to be to survive in our oceans. Healthy shark populations mean a healthy ocean, and my journey to film the population here in Southern California will continue. What started out as a bad month actually ended up being a great month to view these animals. Let's see what March brings us. I will leave you with this bonus footage of another amazing sea animal I film often. Dolphins, the ultimate social animals of the sea. Thanks for watching.
If you enjoy the shark footage, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to learn about sharks, I've included some informative links in the description, as well as where you can get involved in protecting them.